Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week, we have Melissa Bowen of the Authenticity Center. Joining me in studio today, as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. My moment was the moment when I realized I had to do what I was doing as myself. I worked for a great agency for a long time right out of school. It was a good learning opportunity. I was getting kind of an evaluation of my work and what I was doing. And I started to describe the way the work that I was doing, like uh, in Brene Brown's Shame Resilience and some of the Daring Greatly stuff. And I was getting kind of either dismissed or critiqued on it Mm -hmm. within the agency. It is a great agency. I love my mentor still, but it was kind of some pushback or some challenges. And then no joke, uh, several months later, same mentor came to me and brought the same material to me as it was their aha moment. (laughs) No joke. It was like, I found this great stuff. It's so empowering and enlightening. And I remember thinking and said out loud, this is what I brought to you. Yep. And it was that moment that I realized I need to break away to be able to do something that is authentically me, Yeah. Um, work how I want to work, be a counselor how I am a counselor. I didn't want to fall into somebody else's uh, DNA or somebody else's reputation, even though it was a great place to grow and thrive. And so it was then that I decided to open up my own private practice. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and you know, we were talking about authenticity before mm-hmm. and even rebranding, right? Right now, we yes. We need to talk about that. There's one There's one lesson that you just talked about that I don't want anybody to miss out on. And, and I can tell you that when I was heading up a national DNA testing company, I would tell my people, you know, or suggest or advise, and they never heard it. And then I came home and I told my wife, you know, on my tombstone, I want, he said seven, they heard 54, Mm -hmm. you know? And and so when you said this about your mentor, not hearing you during the process, Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it was their, their amazing idea. So sometimes you do have to have external forces mm-hmm. or, or resources come in and, and where they hear it. But let's get back to authenticity. Okay, You've realized this so much. You've rebranded your practice name. Yeah. I've been solo for about seven years. Uh-huh. And just this past last year, I have two counselors working under my umbrella, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so it, they can't work. I don't want them to work under Melissa Bowen L. LPC, LLC. Um, So I have rebranded the agency as the Authenticity Center. These two folks are aligned with my values and a lot of the way that I work, building counseling services that have that kind of vision, the similar vision, but the Authenticity Center. Yeah. I I love that. Good for you. Thank you. Counseling and coaching, if I could just give you my tag. No, no, Uh, we need to hear it. It's counseling and coaching because I do both, but counseling and coaching for authentic courageous living and leadership. That authentic piece has to come in any way we live, whether it's I'm doing it in business Mm -hmm. or even if someone is coming to counseling for trauma or depression or anxiety, we've got to find a centerness in us so that any actions moving forward feel more satisfying and authentic. But too often we are influenced by external pressures. We are talking yeah. about social media earlier. Yeah. And so all the more reason why we have to have a grounding, an anchor somewhere. And I feel it's in your authentic self, whatever that looks like for you. Yeah. I, I tell you, I don't know if it's social media or the smartphone, but, you know, raising kids today has, has gotten so hard. But I think we all do it. Forget about the age. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we do it when we're in elementary school, high school, we put on faces mm-hmm. and and I have, well, I, I used to, I used to have a face from my high school buddies, right? And, and in some ways you do kind of revert back to that, but your coworkers, the people you go to church with, mm-hmm. why can't we just be us everywhere we go? Because people... Because judgment exists, because yes. shame exists. Yeah. Um, so whether it's internal, where we don't feel like we're enough for some reason, whether that's um, from experiences we've had or uh, just from the human experiences of 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 that feeling. Shame is the lowest common denominator, whether it happened by experience or something natural. And if we are not attuned to that motivation, then we will go to FOMO or we will go to comparison or we will go to perfectionism um, or isolation. But if we don't know that that shame is riding shotgun while we're dr- trying to drive, yeah. then we're, we just fall prey to those things. Yeah. yeah what, I, what is FOMO? 
uh, fear of missing out. Oh, that's right. I, I, I learned <laughs> that's that a few months ago. That's what the kids call it these days, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I learned that a few months ago and I forgot it. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. So well, yeah, um, and I, I think we just fall prey to those things if we're not aware of what's what's happening internally. As a counselor and coach for 13 years or so, mm-hmm. and then going into your other practice, do you just find, I know you said that about when you were working under a mentor, have you always been passionate about authenticity? And- um, I wouldn't say I was passionate about authenticity. I think it began because I struggled with authenticity. Got it. Whether it was like people pleasing or being empathetic or in high school, I would have been called moody and emotional or too sensitive. It just takes a while to learn that these are some of the natural things about me that I no longer call it too sensitive yeah. i am sensitive somebody else put a label on it but so i struggled with it and so then in 2014 i went and got the training from Brene brown in her shame resilience daring greatly and learned about the research and the psychology of what was happening to me internally mm-hmm. and the skills and the tools to apply to live a freer more joyful centered authentic life i don't live without the triggers Um, and shame gremlins, as we call them. I don't live without them, but I now have skills to employ them so my decisions are more empowered. So once I learned that and saw the results of that in my personal life, then it became my professional life. Now I am stupid passionate (laughs) about teaching people who, anybody who will listen, Yeah, yeah. who needs that. So that's when it became a passion. Yeah, and and, and I know you're on to the right thing because Brene's got her shame and vulnerability, Vulnerability. right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But as I was sharing with you, we've had, you know, 29, 30 episodes of I Finally Get It, and I have seen a trend where when I have folks in here, business owners, entrepreneurs, and they say, look, for 30 years I've been doing this, and I finally get that I just have to be myself. Mm Mm-hmm. So you, you are on to something, uh, and, and, and I hope that more people get it. Mm-hmm. And they may have to get to their like crisis moment or their low moment or, or that challenge, I guess, um, to realize if, I, if you can embrace who and how you are as a leader, now you can lead effectively because now I know I'll hire for this, yeah. I'll delegate for this, yeah. and here's how I show up, and now we're – you know, working effectively as a team. I remember uh, back in college, I had a fraternity brother of mine. We were at McDonald's one day and he says, I'm going to go be an actor. <laughs> he said, I said, really? He goes, yeah, Jeff, we, we act every day. We act here, mm-hmm. we act there. And to this day, he lives in Hollywood, Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and he's been a working actor for 30, more than 30 years. We are not actors, though. Most of us are not actors, but we fake it and we like I said, we put those faces Masks on. on. Mm-hmm. How exhausting is that mm-hmm. trying to be somebody or not? Mm-hmm. I believe that's why um, I think when I met you, I also teach about a midlife crisis. I fully embrace that I have one. I think everybody does have one, but we don't embrace that term. And the crisis part, I think, because we we live so long trying to live in a mask or think, well, now that I've got the job, the spouse, the kids, the money, the car, um, and yet. Uh, What something about me still needs something different. Uh, If we don't listen to that, we don't use it as a crisis and a turning point. Then we do end up in crisis. Yeah. Because the mask is exhausting. Not that everything is really a mask all the time, but we just can't keep up with that. And if we don't wake up to that, then we get crisis. Yeah. But if you can embrace it and learn what you need to take the mask off man there's so much more freedom and joy on the other side of that because then you can evolve and evolve into new authentic versions of yourself that is huge what you're doing is important mm, I'm telling thanks you. i feel like my purpose is to speak to whoever needs it at the time and i believe this i do believe too the moment i embraced that this is the work that i was going to do authentically me yeah. i'm not for everyone i'm not going to be a counselor for everyone i'm I mean, I could list how I'm not. Um, but the moment I embraced it, my people found me. Uh, absolutely. The people who yep. need me, the yep. people who need you because of what you do. I refer yep. people to you and to some of my other business coaches and leader coaches and counselors because I'm not supposed to be for everyone. We're not. No, but correct. the moment you embrace that, then your people find you. You go from trying to fit in by conforming or by belonging because you're you're being you yeah correct um, correct so it just changed how i operated i love that 
And, and you know, it's it's really important lesson. That that's kind of a a light bulb moment for our our viewers. Come on. Oh yeah. Is you, that you gave us another light bulb moment. You've given us three so far, but but I I need to be more active. Um, Does there is there like a cheer noise that comes with that? Hey, Dustin, can you can you pull okay, one? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi, right, good. Like, well, it, there actually it goes ding. Okay. okay. <laughs> you're, gonna, yeah. you're gonna love it. Okay. So. Um, and, and you know all this talking, I lost what I was about to I'm say. Sorry, <laughs> that's, that's okay. That was like that's the best reaction. Let's take that to, moment and come on. Moment. Uh, I had two convertibles, and I changed everything except the husband. Um, yeah. But and it doesn't even have to happen if people realize it, that doesn't mean like the marriage or the job or the life I was living up to this point was bad. It's just not good for me anymore. Yeah. And so that doesn't mean it actually has to uh, start from scratch, but allow yourself to evolve. So no joke, when I, I remember going through this season and I had to have a conversation with my husband and I was like, uh, people either have two marriages. It's either the same person or a different person. And he was like, are we on our second marriage? And I said, yes. And he said, how long has it been? And I said, for me, it's been about six months. For you, I think five minutes, but I'll give you time yeah, to catch yeah, yeah. up. <laughs> but I, but And it wasn't like anything was wrong with him because what I realized, there was nothing wrong with the life. I had been working hard to build the life and we have good lives. So where's the discontent? And it was because I was evolving as a human. I wanted to feel differently in my life. So that doesn't mean I have to replace everything, yep. but I learned I needed to show up differently. I wanted to communicate with him differently. I wanted to work a little bit differently. So I got into other things. I can feel I'm talking really, really fast. No, that's great. Um, this is good. Because it, it does excite me because I do want other people because nobody relates to midlife crisis until you're on the other side of it. People search for depression, anxiety, uh, infidelity, cars, other things, um, when it's possible you're just evolving and stay in touch with how you're changing and what do you need from that. You might just need to show up differently for your life and your life will change. Yeah, yeah. This episode is brought to you by Corvette of Lafayette. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can tell you, yeah. So this is very interesting to me because uh, I don't know if I heard this or if I've thought this, that people in, in relationships, marriages, let's say somebody, let's say my actor friend who he's ha been happily married for decades. Let's say he starts to become a little more famous, a little more well-known, and this person just doesn't want that. And they're evolving or growing or changing, mm -hmm. right? Just because of the status recognition. Can't you grow apart? For and sure. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. But you caught it at six months. Oh, it was like way longer than that. Six months when I told him. Gotcha. Or, or I was aware, I became aware of it. Um, yeah, yep. we do grow apart. I think when you stay checked in with yourself mm -hmm. and with the people that you're in relationship communicate. with, communicate, yep. Yep. then you reevaluate the common goal. And this is how it's like, I mean, you do a vision board, a business plan mm -hmm. it, that evolves. So yeah. why can't that also with your relationships? It's like, OK, well, the way we're operating doesn't suit us anymore. Maybe the kids are grown and we're we're now in chaperone and chauffeur mode. So you don't operate the way that you had littles. So you just keep evolving. Listen to that. Stay grounded in it and and move forward intentionally and thoughtfully. I love that. Have you always owned a business? No, okay. uh, count. This is my second career. Gotcha. Where in that process that we're talking about of midlife crisis mm -hmm. change, did you start the second career? The career came first. The crisis came after. Gotcha. Mm. So it was during. While I was a counselor, mm -hmm. I was a counselor helping people with their lives. And then just a handful of years in, I guess around when I was forty-seven or so, I just was like. I'm doing joyful things, but I don't feel the joy and I, I didn't know why. So I did look for ways to help with depression, anxiety, discontent. What's wrong with me? Do I need medication? Why don't I like my church or my husband or my job anymore? Do I want to move to Key West? You know, like all the things. And then it, it, it was kind of a several year long exploration process. I was 47 at the time. It just took a couple of years to yeah. figure out what was going on because there was nothing wrong, air quotes businesses are going to evolve too and if you stay stuck in this is this is how we always do it this is how it's always been done then you just get stuck and it's it's just a matter of stuckness you know i call it a midlife crisis for personal but businesses would call it we're stuck in a rut and we're not evolving into new ways of being authentically
Correct. And if we do equate this to business, you mm-hmm. know, you know, any company that's managing and executing the way they're supposed to have regular check-ins and you mentioned the check-in. So you kind of had to check in with your husband and, and tell him this and, mm-hmm. and thank you for sharing that. Do you see business owners that, that um, kind of suffer? Cause I think companies don't even understand who they really are. Yeah. And, and I didn't, but the business owners themselves, are they going through similar patterns? I think so. Um, because it, like what I do see with businesses, um, I, what I love is we're moving into the emotional and mental wellness mm-hmm. of the employee now, yeah. um, more so than we have in the past decade, I think. Uh, and so I'm glad business owners are getting into that of honoring that your employees are human and, and they come to the table with a whole host of things, letting their businesses evolve that way too. I, I do some work with uh, a couple of companies. So they're trying to decide, um, survey the employees. What is working? What is not? That's the personal check-in that we do as individuals that I recommend. And I think and you recommend it to your business clients. Mm-hmm. Survey, feedback, get feedback. Mastery requires feedback. Yep. So evaluate it anything what's working what's not working whether you do it every quarter every year whatever so that you can then change what's what's needed and so i I started doing some training development employee wellness um workshops for some companies every other month which has been really fun just teaching on boundaries time skills communication skills emotional intelligence um so I do like how businesses are evolving that way. I love that. Yeah, yeah and it, it's a sign of the times. It, it you know it's more accepted, and I love that people are changing. Mm-mm. And Me I too. think you need to do. And uh, I may have some referral. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's outstanding. Yeah. So it, it, what I what I love what I'm hearing is is that you recognized this in your in your personal life, and you've brought this into your business, and then you've taken that into not only into your practice, but you've you've totally shifted your practice. Mm-hmm. So is there a big shift when when you have this realization as a business owner? Or, or is it is it too much to handle and I'm changing my whole business or yeah. is it just you? This has just been me um, evolving where I felt my interests were changing, um, developing. And so I think it's not like it's a creative project, but honoring the creativity in what is entrepreneurship. Amen. That we get into things because we have interests or talents or abilities. And so this business development for me personally is I love the counseling aspect. And I started to fall in love with the energy of different things of coaching and team development for organizations and fostering uh, development of new counselors. And so I I think it's just honoring the creative process and allowing my business to evolve that way. So there may be a time where I realize I have to set some boundaries and let some things go so I can focus a little bit more. You helped me with that. Uh, gosh, was that almost two years ago? I know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm just going to let it evolve. But I don't have like a business grand plan to be some something grand right now. I'm just letting the creativity kind of go yeah. and see where it goes. See where what you turn it into yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Life after the change in the business, mm-hmm. like when you rebrand and everything. Freedom it, and joy. Oh, my goodness. Freedom and joy, my core, which my core values. I did that work early on. Like, what are my core values as a person? And when I embraced that and started pick to pick up your glass and read that coaster. What? Joy. <laughs> Love it. I'm not. Light, light. <laughs> <laughs> um, so freedom and joy freedom since you've made this shift. Yeah, because then I allowed myself to operate the way that was authentic to me. Yeah. And again, in, it, not in comparing, but in looking at other things that, that I would not be happy operating in other ways. Um, so now I do. That's wonderful. Yeah. So um, for any any business owner out there, any counselor who is in a practice and getting mm-hmm. into a routine, both personally and professionally, what is a, a business tip you would share with them? Go ahead and get your research by looking at others. Um, see what you like that other people are doing. It's not trying to imitate Maybe a little emulate, but get inspired by others and then do it as you. 
and then it will be authentic. We're not recreating any wheels here. You're you're just interpreting it to success, what that looks like as you. So get in touch with how do you want to work? What does your office look like? Is it in greenery? Is it outside? Is it scheduled? Do I work nights and weekends? Do I have other people with me? Figure out what it feels and looks like to you first and build it from there. But I think it's really okay to be inspired by other people. I, I want to I want it to look like that. Or I, honestly, what we kind of get caught up in, but I think can be good is I want to feel like what that looks like, it feels like. Yeah. Yep. And that's the problem with social media. As we were talking about social media before, I want to feel like what that looks like, it feels like. But let that be information. Yeah. And then own it mm -hmm. and let it be a direction. Maybe. And develop from there. That, I, I, right. like, I like what that office looks like, it feels like. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do to make that mine. And then it becomes authentic yeah, to you. Thank you. But don't try to copy it. Yeah. You, you mentioned inspired by other people. Who who have been your inspirations in your life? In my life? Well, you know, you yeah. practice both. Well, okay. So um, where I started was with BMNU Counseling, Dudley BMNU. He he knew what kind of counselor he was going to be, and he created a beautiful service there. So he, I, I am so grateful that I got to learn from him. Some other individual counselors who, again, they just kind of practiced as themselves. I love some of our other agencies that are totally authentic, totally not me, like the Therapy Garden, Eco counseling and stuff i have fake plants in my office so but i i i love when people just work how they work yeah, um yeah. i'm doing some work with um jackie russo and the russo mm -hmm. group um i'm very inspired by them they're bold just bold and i, I love courageous action because i could talk myself out of courageous action yeah, sure yeah. Um, business owners again uh wonderland performing arts allison uh brandon uh she just took her dream and is creating a beautiful thing in the it, community. She really is. Yeah. She yeah. Really. Um, cookies, Caroline Cookies. Love that place. Lolly's Chocolates. You know, I, I don't know. I just love it when I see people um, who are doing what they love to do. Yeah. yeah. So That's that great. inspires me. So all these people you you mix with and come in contact mm -hmm. with, why do you try to leave them different and better just because they met you? I love to give people the space to be themselves without judgment. It's hard to find places to breathe in our world today where you can truly just breathe and be yourself. And I genuinely offer that space to anyone I come in, or try to uh, give that space to anyone I come in contact with. So they feel safe, that they're across from a person they can trust, um, and that they can be vulnerable because vulnerability is emotional risk and exposure. And the risk can go either way. When we do it with people that are safe and trusting, then there's genuine connection. And that is where the magic is. No joke. It's that's only awesome. in genuine connection. That's and awesome. That's vulnerable and a safe space. Thanks for tuning in to I Finally Get It. For more information about Melissa and what she's up to, visit our show notes at ifinallygetit.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you're a business owner or entrepreneur and you have a light bulb moment that you think will help other business owners and entrepreneurs, please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.